Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today I want to take a look at the uh, firmware that was just released yesterday, I believe it was, for the Mavic Mini. It's updated firmware. They had some manual video controls. We'll go over that in just a moment here because I'm pretty excited that they finally added that. Not that I necessarily use it very much, but some people have really been wanting that feature added to the Mavic Mini. Now before I move forward, I am testing out some 3D printed prototype yeah, thumb grips here for the Mavic Mini from Airy. You probably know a few weeks ago I did a video for their official ones that fit other controllers and they weren't made for the mini these are some prototypes these are just 3d printed these are not available yet if they do become available which i think they will um, these they'll be molded i'm just giving these a, tr a try today because i actually really like having that on my since i'm a thumb flyer so my thumbs do not slip so i'm going to give that a try today all right back to the video the um the firmware itself is um version 1.00.0500 and they've done some things obviously that they've released with this uh, they optimized the remote controller performance so i'm gonna should have a, i'll put a screenshot up here so you guys can see all the features that they've added so they've done some sort of upgrade to the actual uh controller uh so it says if, if it does beep, you want to make sure you calibrate it. Mine did not beep after I was finished, so that's good. And it, the update itself took probably around 20 minutes or so. It wasn't very long. It's only about 40 megabytes to download, but it was actually... Um, a uh, longer update process than I actually would have thought for that size. So as you see there in the screenshot, they've I've also they've added the manual exposure for videos. That's the big one that people are really excited about. That of course requires the Fly DJI Fly at 1.0.8 or newer. They've also added some frame rate, um, different res, um, frame rates, uh, frames per second on some of the videos. So 2.7K, they've added 24 frames per second. A lot of people like that because like in cinema and movies um, in, in the United States, everything's filmed at close to 24 frames per second. And some people like that. I personally am not a fan of it. When you do fast movements or yaws, it's shuddery because there's not enough frames to fill that in. I like 60 frames per second at everything that I do, it's butter smooth. But if you like that, that's important. They've also added uh, 24 or 48 frames per second at 1080p. And again, that requires the newest uh, version of the app. They've added, uh, added manual white balance adjustment. Again, have to have the newer app. Improve the download speed for photos and videos. So it just means it's gonna be quicker to download to your phone, I believe is what that means and improve flight stability in some scenarios. So maybe they've adjusted the PID slightly on the flight controller. And they've added, added some uh, support for operation frequencies in the Ukraine, which after I updated the drone, if I go into the about of the app, you can see it still thinks there's an upgrade available, but when you click it, it's just the Ukraine only. So I don't think it'll upgrade that, obviously, unless you live you know, in the Ukraine where it looks at the GPS of your phone, locates where you are, and see whether you need to have that upgrade. I don't believe that's because it's just not necessary. All right, so what we're gonna do is, I've already done the upgrade. Like I said, it took about maybe 20 minutes or so to do. Make sure you have plenty of power to the drone when you do it and your controller. My controller was kind of low, and right at the very end, it's sort of beeping. This this controller really sucks a lot of power in my opinion. It's surprising how quickly it, it goes down, but thankfully it's rechargeable. So we'll take it up here and I'll show you guys in the screen recording what the uh, those new video settings look like in the app. And I'll just fiddle with it for a second. But I mean, the actual flight, I'm probably just going to use the auto uh, feature. Sometimes I will use the EV and manually set it like a really bright day. Like today is sort of bright, but there are clouds. And then you can just set your auto exposure to lock if you want to, so it doesn't constantly change. If you find a really happy medium there on the EV that you want to keep it set at. That's what I really recommend. But if you're a real camera geek, these new settings in your ISO, shutter speed, stuff like that is going to allow you really to tweak this drone and get some pretty spectacular video as long as you know what you're doing so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go connect the drone to the uh to the uh, app and the controller and i think it was asking me yesterday for a compass calibration we'll see if it does again and then i'll be back and get all once it's all connected we'll continue we'll take it up here and fly it around so i'll be right back guys 
All right guys, so I have the Mavic Mini all connected with everything. As you guys can see, it did ask me for a compass calibration. I just did one again, it asked for it twice. It's gotta be the rebar in this concrete. Sometimes it causes me problems. I like to hold up really high when I do it because you don't want to be have that metal in interfere, but it's possible it could still interfere here. So we'll have to see. But if I, my grass is a little bit tall, I need to mow it again. And I, I'm afraid it's gonna hit the prop. So I want to keep it on something like concrete. But like I said, keep in mind, concrete like this often has rebar, those metal pieces of uh, the supports in there, and that's going to could cause some co compass issues. Now, I've got a screen recorder going here, and the, the new features we mentioned was those settings down here under the auto. Then you can see it blow out here as a picture does, as it's going to those manual settings, which are way wrong. Your ISO, shutter, and it says, I think it's M.M. .M. It's hard to see that down there because I think that's bumping the exposure up to 2.7 or something like that it's blowing everything out it's just taking in a way too much light but we're gonna just do auto but I want you guys to at least see that again as we, you can adjust that here let me show you the ISO you can change and then the shutter here the shutter speed I think uh, I've read like if I knew in 60 frames a second, I thought I heard 120 is what you kind of want. But I'm not a camera expert on that, so I'm going to go back to auto, so I don't have to fiddle with that. But that's what you guys can see. That's the big thing. Now maybe they, they've also possibly tuned the pids a little bit, so we'll see how it flies. See, there is a bit of wind today because it says they've added some flight stability to it. Let's go ahead and just clip it back over to auto, and then of course in the video uh, settings under 1080p, you can see they added that 48 frames per second there. And under 2.7, they've added the 24. I'm going to go back to 1080p at 60. That's what I like because I like that really smooth uh, video. And let's just take it up now and fly it around and see how it performs there. We'll include some the screen recording and then I'll include a lot of the SD card footage once we're in the air because that's going to look better. And it's seeing compass calibration required again. So that means that this concrete here is causing me some issues. So I'm going to move the drone and let's try taking off somewhere else. So it's done this a few times. It seems like this, the Mavic Mini's compass is just really sensitive to the metal. I've calibrated it twice. So let's just move it over here well I'm getting the uh, my phone was acting up yeah there we go the home point has been updated please check it on the map all right why well, and I like these these thumb pads from Aerie again these are just prototypes Oh yeah, that's nice and smooth as it always is. I'm in just the regular P mode. So, your normal flight mode, I believe that's what that was. There's also like a cinematic. And, let's see if I click that. There's sport mode and there's cinematic. So, P is good for every, everyday flying. Cinematic's going to be a really slow yaw and slow flight. That's going to be really good for flying if you're filming an object or even flying indoors would be perfect. Sport modes really if you need to haul butt somewhere. Let's just take it up here. And there's quite a bit of glare today even with my phone brightness all the way up. So I'm gonna to try to walk over here and see if I can get into the shade so I can see. So, flying it out here, I go got to above a tree in the way, guys. You can see it right over that house. So, and there's a bit of Wi-Fi lag, as you expect on these. We aim it kind of back. Let's see now if I can tilt the gimbal there. There, I was tilting the gimbal. Yeah. You get so many of these different drones, you get mixed up on which one's buttons do what. And uh, some have dual dials, you know, like the Evo, some of them don't. Just kind of fly it right down the street there. I can hear it. Again, since the Mini uses um, Wi-Fi, you do see 
Set so it's signal interference. Let's get it up a little higher. I'm not very high up. And that's probably what's causing some of it. I also have a lot of Wi-Fi in my subdivision with all these homes, and but that just it causes me to have problems with range. It does it really bad on my Evo, and I think it could just be some issues with all the Wi-Fi. There's a lot of five gigahertz of Wi-Fi. I, I can see the drone there. I'm just looking down at my screen, so hopefully my head cam hasn't been aiming down the whole time. Here it comes. When you want to go out very far, it's always important that you get the drone up high. I'm just trying to get some cinematic shots there. So I wasn't up very high. But yeah, I mean, obviously it flies great. Let's let's see if we can go into those manual controls again. I'm gonna take it up, tilt the gimbal down some, and then if I go into that, as you can see here, oop, that was the auto exposure lock. Into this, well, I, actually, you have to stop filming. It looks like that's interesting. So if you stop filming, then you can change it. I don't, it's grayed out. All right, I didn't notice that. So you cannot change any of those settings while you're filming. You have to stop the video. So I think I'm gonna do here is just bring it down here. I'm gonna stop recording. I still got the screen recording going here and let's turn it over towards me, guys. You'll see me stand here, I got my RD's drone review shirt on. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to stop recording. And now I'll be able to go in. You guys can see how that's going to change again. Look at how bright that got as those settings defaulted to, you know, a, a non auto. And everything got really bright. Again, that's just going to be visible in the screen recording. I would need to be recording to the SD card to actually get that really bad looking footage on there right now. I'm going to go back to auto. As you see, auto is pretty good. The mini does tend to overexpose a little bit in most people's opinion. So you might want to set the EV down to negative 0.3 or something like that. And then auto exposure lock so it doesn't throw the exposure all over the place. But yeah, it flies great. I mean, I love my Evo, but I think the Mini is maybe my favorite to fly. It's just so portable and little. You know, DJI's flight controllers are second to none. The Evo flies great, but I mean, I'm just saying DJI is... Their flight controllers are the cream of the crop. I do have the Femi X8 SE 2020 edition coming once it ships. And you guys may have seen that video if you're interested in a really budget drone that I think is going to be really, I can't say for certain, but since it's pretty much the same drone as before, which is upgraded range and a, and a supposedly a much better camera with HDR, now the camera was good. Um, that drone, you can get that drone for as low as $299 if you get chosen. Um, by the thousand people to get chosen, but even worst case with the coupon, it's two forty, three forty-seven. That's fifty dollars less than this drone. So it's got a, you know, it's got HDR and long range. This one doesn't have 4K camera like it. This one doesn't have the advertised range. Doesn't have HDR. But boy, I tell you what, the camera is still really good on this. Really, really good. So that's just regular mode. Let's see if we switch over into sport mode. Now look at that. Now you can see how much faster that is and the gimbal's still doing a pretty good job of holding its, holding its position in the gimbal because that's tough when you're throwing the little drone around like that. And then let's go over to the cinematic mode. You guys can see there, look at that. Well, I've given it full yaw. Look how slow it is to turn. And that is obviously for really slow filming, but that's that's what you want. If you're gonna film something um, and want it to look good for a movie, a film that you're shooting, even for your YouTube videos, because you do not want a bunch of quick yaw movements. Some people do that out of habit. I've done it. 
you know you, you want to straighten your video out and then if you don't edit it out you get a bunch of jerky movements and it just looks terrible in the video so this will help prevent that you can't do a really quick yaw movement now you can still do quick gimbal tilts and that's another bad habit that I used to do and try not to do that so much try to limit your movements don't do a bunch of tilt 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 yaw 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 it just looks awful in the videos and um, you can you can slow down the gimbal pitch if you're afraid that that's going to be too too much, uh, fast for you when you're pit, uh, adjusting that let's just turn it around towards me here before we land again really slow y'all on cinematic mode I'm going to put it back into regular P mode now just hey guys just before I land let's go ahead and just land it Is it, it sees everything's okay there's no obstructions the mini is nice about letting you know if it thinks that there's anything that might be in the way of landing so that is always a plus all right guys so as you can see let's go ahead we got the oh, that's right i already stopped recording the video but yeah the new manual settings you can see work obviously i didn't do much with that because that's not my forte but you can see from the video screen recording that's what they've added along with a few other minor things and i think this is a, a nice upgrade i knew they would do it eventually and i'm glad that dji finally did all right guys hope you guys enjoyed this quick firmware well, it wasn't that quick <laughs> uh, firmware upgrade video on the dji mavic mini be sure to subscribe to the channel Click the bell so you know when I do upload new videos. And as always, guys, have a wonderful day. The power of the dark side, 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 side.